Yeah, and if you want to follow me, you can. So my social media for my Instagram is Natasha Rose Mills. Yo quiero comenzar hablándole sobre un cortometraje bastante interesante que es Breaking the Cycle. Habla sobre las cuestiones de el suspenso, las situaciones de cada día. ¿Cuál es tu recuerdo en ese corte? Yes, yes. What are the memories that you got from the short film Breaking the Cycle? Oh, oh, that was a long time ago. That's very long. <laughs> yes, but we always ask about the first words of every person. Really? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. It was it was so long ago. I'm trying to think. Uh, I believe I played a daughter in the film, but it was I was um I was more of a supporting part of the cast rather than an actual lead role but I can't remember it because it was so long ago John, que fue hace mucho tiempo ya no recuerda ¿Tú qué dices si nos concentramos más en los trabajos recientes? Claro Hay también eh, una bastante participación que se llama No Fighter es ya una película de TV eh, que es la vida de, pues, de tres actrices que luchan cada día por conseguir sus sueños ¿Qué opinas de su personaje? ¿Cómo fue construido? Y es interesante. Uh, but we can talk if you want it about no filter, about how do you build your character in this TV movie. Oh, build, oh, my, no filter. Okay. Yes. Oh, that was just, that was a short, a short character I had um, where I was, basically it was a mock audition. It was just, a, it was a small scene as a mock audition. And my character was a bit, I suppose, a bit flamboyant and um, very girly and quite, quite bubbly. But it, because it was quite a short scene, and that's what it was, it was, it was a mock audition, like within the film. Bueno, antes de hablar de la película más destacada y todo eso, está el retorno de de Krampus. Ahí se visualiza un poco y tuvimos la oportunidad de tener a Amber Doy. Hablando de ese trabajo, quisiera preguntarte cómo ha evolucionado los filmes de terror, más que todo en Navidad. Ok, um, we are picking the most recent ones, so don't talk about mm -hmm. the, the old ones. <laughs> and yes, we talked with Amber Doy about the return of the Krampus. And we mm. know that there is a lot of Krampus movies, a lot of movies about mm -hmm. uh, Christmas tales. But how do you see, yeah, the evolution, the continuity, and of course about the return of the camp Krampus? Obviously, there's there's quite a difference between the two by by different films, and obviously with this one, it had like a different twist to it. And I think with my character, there was a different story inside where she was recovering from trauma following um, losing her parents, and you couldn't see what side she was on throughout the film. And that's what I saw in the reviews as well that people quite like that because it was building that sense of suspense. You don't know what's going to happen and you don't know how she is going to, what she's going to do next. Is she going to turn? Well, there's a scene where she is. It seems like there's a slight um, disconnection, let's say, in terms of her character. And then there's a vulnerability, which is underneath, which is where there could be like a split personality. So that was an interesting character to play. I did like it because it was playing with that sense of um, a little something a little bit different and mental health, which I like playing characters like that. And there's the there's a psych psychopath type of character as well, which is kind of interesting. But it's like knowing how she actually got into that in the first place and how she actually turned because of what actually happened to her. But it could have been that it was all in her head. So we don't actually know. It's almost like drawing an interpretation of what it actually means. Was it all in her head in the first place? Or did it actually happen? John, mm -hmm. antes de que traduzcas, I, I will translate that part because it was really great. John, creo que si tú la viste, acá hay una teoría muy buena. ¿Todo fue real o pasó en la cabeza de ella? Solo te digo eso. Oh, wow, espérate. Uf. 
increíble, sí. Eso es bastante interesante. No me había fijado, pero sí es algo muy bueno. Gracias. Eh, también hay una película que es bastante buena, de Heides, Paga, que es de Negrito Andrés, pero hay algo importante. Esa película trata sobre el don que desarrolla una persona en ver lo extrasensorial. ¿Le gustaría participar en este tipo más de historias? Y también, ¿qué opinas sobre estos premoniciones y todo? Do you want to keep participating on histories like the Hades about premonitions, about a really, really great movie? Do you want to keep doing these type of projects? Oh, these type of projects. I do find them quite interesting, but I am also interested in other projects, period dramas as well. But I like particularly projects and characters that you can dive into the psyche of what's going on. And there's a lot of depth behind it. So that's why I think I lean in to some of these projects is for that reason and there's a lot of sort of room to to explore when you're working on horror films as well especially well, obviously indie films there's a lot of room where you can you can experiment there's flexibility if you're working usually working with a film director they give you flexibility to share your ideas and, and express you know yourself and, and what you can actually put in or bring to the role So I really like these type of characters. I find them quite interesting, especially as I'm working on Krampus, which was quite a, I suppose, a challenging role in that sense of splitting between the two, the different, the different sides of personality. I suppose it's like that sense of borderline personality that she had. And what do you remember about your movie, The Hairs? Oh, The Hairs. Don't worry, I love the 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 previous answer. By the way, I really really like. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, that was quite a while ago. I was more in the flashback scene for it. Um, so I, I didn't have a prominent role in it. Um, so I played the younger role of the main character in a flash, flashback scene when she was much younger and she is with this, with this other guy. And it was all sort of that pit from the period side of when she was younger so through the per period drama there was like quite a short flashback scene that I was actually in where it's like the reminiscing over when it was the good times y también que nos hable un poco sobre Last Night es una historia que trata sobre el tema del síncope síncope es la pérdida de conocimiento hace mucho rato y todo can you tell us about the síncope and Last Night Many more. <laughs> um, uh, which one? Sorry, so it's last night and no, last night. Oh, just okay. Let's go with last night. Yes, because we know that this movie does deals with the theme of the syncope. The same. I don't know how we can pronounce it on English, but deals with the loss of memory for a very, very long time. So tell us about it. It was. It was to do with like the loss of of memory, where especially. Ben that what he was going through and there was like a scene where he was like there was a flashback scene of when he was um remembering so it's like a but it was just it because it was quite some time ago it was to do with the death that happened and I'm trying to remember now because it was quite some time ago it was to do with the death that happened and did she actually see it And her and the person that's supposed to be her friend is actually lying to her in the first place. And later on, she finds out that that is actually true, that the reason this guy died in the first place was because he was jealous. Okay. Excelente. Ahora hablamos sobre Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Bueno, a cada uno le preguntamos sobre cuál es ese cuento infantil que desean ver adaptado al terror. Se lo hago a ella, pero también, ¿cómo fue el de pronto construir el personaje de Jessica? Porque yo sé que fue uno de los personajes más, o sea, sí, más creepy ahí. John is right. Uh, he got two questions, but I will do the first mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Because we are kids to everybody. There is like a mm, <clears throat> kid's tale, knowing that Winnie Pooh is made of, of like a trend of redoing all tales, but also we know that it's not the first movie in England that does it. There is a lot just because one this floats. 
there is like an old tale or old child said that you want to see portrayed on the video screen in this terrorific or really creepy way? Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, how to explain that? So obviously that you've got the classic version of Winnie the Pooh that's always going to be that and that this is obviously a sort of a remake of that classic version of Winnie the Pooh going down a different route a little bit of a twist actually a massive twist because it's a horror version but it's a sense of a bit of a spoof horror version obviously with the old Winnie the Pooh let's not say the old Winnie the Pooh but that's for children and this Winnie the Pooh is specifically for adults so that's where it leans into something a little bit a little bit different and with that sense of 80s because it is 80s horror it's an 80s horror slasher film and, and there is another and yes and there is like another history another child stage that you want to see in this version this way like because <laughs> we know that we know that the director will do bambi i think robin hood uh, yeah I know that there is like a, um, this this little Ed character, I always forget the name. So there is like another one that you want to, uh, Haunted Haunty, of course. There is like another history that you want to see portrayed. Because I remember that mm -hmm. Charlene told us that she want to see the the Peanuts, Snoopy and all this. No, a very, yes, oh, oh, so any other child, any other childhood. Sí, um, yeah. Cartoons made into horror films. <laughs> okay, um, hmm. a little Red Riding Hood, I think, would be very interesting because there what there is, isn't there? There's the Hunch Hunchman. Is that the right? Yeah. So that 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 has that connotation, doesn't it? Really. So, um, but I think it might be interesting, Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. I, I think I will translate it. Yes, yes. I will sure. translate it in Spanish. Is caperucita mm -hmm. roja, caperucita roja. And John, I have the next question. And I love this question about uh, that John does because yeah, your character, even in the trailer, is the one that stroke most. I mean, when I watched the trailer of the movie a long time ago, I was like, oh my god, she's really suffering. And we know and we see the movie. Yes, yeah. for me it was like, oh, that, very soon I was suffering that, a lot. That, yeah. Yes, I, I, I was. Oh my God, is that actress? So yeah, how do you feel this character? Because it's one of the, the ones that get most suffering through the whole yes. movie. Tell us, tell us, please. Um, so it's all about working beforehand on on an actual scene through empathy and understanding emotions and that's the most important thing actually understanding what emotion your character is feeling during a certain time but there's also consistency of personality of what your character actually has as an emotion so that's that's the basis of the work that you do in preparation when you're actually on set it's sensing into that feeling of what's actually going on. And if you haven't been in that situation before, it's almost just immersing yourself in it in order to experience it. Because that's what it is. It's, it's an experience where you can actually feel it of what's actually going on through your own, through your own emotions in order to understand the character's emotion. Well, essentially, it's understanding your own emotions to bring out that character, but it always comes from you. It comes from you. It has to come from you. Great. Yeah, <laughs> Para poder culminar, hay su próximo proyecto. Es el del Conejo Asesino. Entonces, quisiera preguntarle sobre qué nos espera de esta historia y qué nuevos elementos habrá en este tipo de nuevo género del terror. And now we are expecting Easter Bunny Massacre, The Bloody Trail. Anything you can tell us about this history and this type of histories, go ahead. Easter Bunny? Um, yes. Oh, do you mean Easter Killing? Or do you mean the film yes. I worked on? <laughs> yes, the, the film that you are, uh, the Easter the Bunny Massacre. The one I worked on, yeah. So, yeah, she was, um, she was kind of like, yeah, more of like a, I suppose a bit more of a flamboyant character with like with her earrings and everything else and and some people didn't really particularly 
like her. She didn't have many friends. And she'd often push push people away. Um, so when there was a death scene that I did, which was very challenging. It was very, very challenging. And when we do these, sometimes they are awkward and, and can and they can actually be quite hard. You mentioned something interesting because every time I mm -hmm. see the interviews that we made and other interviews about mm -hmm. these movies, yes, it brings a lot of the 80s, like the dead scenes are not CGI, mm -hmm. they're real. How, how is the process? Because I know it's a lot of time, a lot of hours, a lot. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of hours involved. You know, sometimes you're doing like 12 hours um, and you're working. Yeah. you It's like day, day till day till night. And then obviously you've got you're behind time sometimes or you need to sort of get to that point of when to keep going and to finish at a specific time, like before it gets to a specific time of when is like, you know, when it's actually when it's early in the morning, if it's like three o'clock and we need to make sure that we get it when it's actually dark. So you're always having to having to be within the time and at the same time you're working long hours. So it is really tough. And not to mention of it's easy to say delving into an emotion, but when you're constantly doing that, it can be, it can seem like mechanical. So it's almost like having to take yourself outside of it and find a bit of space because you do need sometimes you when you work on these films, you do need some sort of space even just like just to have like a walk somewhere and then come back again because it's like um, to just get yourself back into the actual character. Yeah. John, es que eh, tuve que hacer una pregunta porque mm -hmm. en esta película de, de Easter Bunny se viene una muerte durísima, durísima. Oh, se wow. le puede decir más dura que la que hizo en Winnie Pooh, por eso le pregunté cómo fue el proceso. O sea, tenemos que verla. Tenemos que verla. I was, I was telling to John that we need to see the Easter Bunny Massacre because you tell us that there will be a great and terrific death. So that's one yeah. of the things that I was telling. It was an interesting film to play. I think one of the favorite one I had so far by far is Winnie the Pooh and that's not because it's done really well obviously that helps but it's actually that it was based on Winnie the Pooh and it and it gained didn't just gain interest but also I was very interested in it when I when I was involved in it it was it was really just cool to be involved in it and um and I liked my character because she just had an element of me and also that I don't know if you the scene the actual scene when she when we actually arrive at the house and that shows her motherly side when she's asking for the phones she's almost like the mother the saying we need to focus on this one person which is Maria to help her through what she's going through and obviously somebody else has got her sort of idea of what she wants to do so that shows her side of her character through you know she's supportive but then also she's got that element of my mother and what I say goes no Natasha you are <laughs> not only but by my side you are my favorite character in, in that movie my actress but for many people like I was saying since the trailer because I watch a lot of reactions a lot of reactions about the movie and the people get stuck and the first time you enter and you're crying but because you are terrified And you, I, I, I told you, you are my favorite character in the movie. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Cierto, yo, desde el trailer, ella impacta con la sí. escena llorando y todo. Good, good, good. Yeah, it was um, quite a, a very challenging role to play, particularly the scene at the end. That was like the bit where I was very disorientated. I felt like I was in that disconnect of what actually was going on. And it was my second no that initially that was the first de first death scene that I actually did in a horror film so it was that initial shock and um feeling like you're having to get into the role of what's actually happening and what and Winnie the Pooh is essentially like pulling you pulling you like literally just pulling you outside of the car and is about to you know, do something really terrible 
Don't worry. It's not a spoiler. Don't worry. No <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> no. All the people is watching and believe us, that movie even came to our small city. This is a small city and get really like the pool theater and something. All the people is going to see the death and they did, really did a great job. And not only you, the, the actresses, the director. We got and Andrew Scott Bell. He did a beautiful job with the music. Oh, ah, yes, Andrew, yeah. He oh, did. he's a master. He's a master. Yeah. John, lo que tú quieras decir, yo estoy feliz. No, agradecerle, darle un fuerte aplauso. No. <risa> Natacha, Natacha. Eh, que diga sus redes sociales, un saludo para Colombia. Eh, invita a la gente para que ya, creo, si no estoy mal, que estará en una plataforma de streaming Winnie the Pooh. Así que invita a la gente a que sigan de pronto conociendo más de la historia. No hay que vean el Easter Bunny, yo lo quiero ver. Sí, ya casi, <coughs> pero bueno, todavía no. Ok, okay Natasha, we were talking that, thank you, the camera is yours, you, for you, tell us, all, all, all the people, to follow your social media, so tell us, tell the oh. people that stay, like, attend on alert, because we know that Winnie Pooh will be at all the streaming services yes. and of course invite people because uh, the, the Easter Bunny will come so invite people, do whatever you want the camera is yours, mm -hmm. social media invite people, go ahead okay, well, um, yeah, so Winnie the Pooh will be around some cinemas and also if you're not able to watch it at a cinema, you can stream it, so it's on Apple Stream TV and other stream platforms like Amazon And some others as well, my view, have some cinemas around as well. So depending on where you are, you might actually be able to go and watch it. It's actually really nice if you're actually in a cinema and you're watching it, because then it becomes, you know, it's more immersive then. So, yeah. And if you want to follow me, you can. So my social media for my Instagram is Natasha Rose Mills. <laughs> I love your background, by the way. I know it's computer generated, but I love the bridge. <laughs> Oh yeah, I had to put this on because I didn't I didn't know what other backdrop to use and I've got a light in the background, so you know. Um but yeah. Okay. I love it. How do you like the bridge? Yeah. John, no sé qué vas a decir. No, agradecerle, muchas gracias por la oportunidad. Bienvenida siempre al canal y que cuando ya esté esté bueno y ya que pueda difundirlo en todos lados. Yeah, no, you are always welcome. Thank you for being on the channel. When the Easter Bunny is out there killing, let us know. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for having me on as well. I really appreciate it and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. God bless you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Go with. <laughs>